So after night one, being a bit of a roller coaster, from start off pretty, pretty good to going down to the mid category, and uh, ended up pretty damn good, uh, pretty damn great uh, with the last two ma masses on night one. So, what did uh, West Mayo night two have store for us? Well, I tell you right now, after year like five years. Four years since they started the whole two night two night uh, format. Night two was a lot better, lot better than, than night one, and not because of what happened in the main event. We were gonna, we were gonna get to that, but you could tell that the matches that I want to card up for night two definitely uh, felt more like it, was, it felt like they went all out for night two more than night one instead of like the other way around. So. Night two was leaps and bounds better than night one, but what happened exactly? Well, let me tell you what happened. Let's talk about it. You knew the channel. I'm Michael Davis, Angel Black. This is the PW Hustle Zone. It is. This is my review of what's the rest of Mania 40 night two, what's Mania Sunday, and it was it was a really fun one. Um, but night, night two would deem this. Night two would uh, say this with me uh, as a whole. That's all I'm gonna say about, about that. But let's start off the show with the first match of the night. We got Seth freaking Wallens take on Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. And just as I thought, um, Seth Wallens, uh, Wolverine and Coyotes say all their big, big uh, like me and me and interests for night two. Cause they had they they did their standard uh, standard uh interests on night one, but they went all out with the interests on night two. Cause this interest from from Seth Rollins was <laughs> it was mixed up it, it was mixed between uh Marty Gar and Adam Rose's Wolves Buzz on the one, and and it was just, it was a, like a fun uh, interest uh, for Seth Rollins. I mean, I I I, I enjoyed it. Just like I, just like I enjoyed uh, everything everything that happened in the match. Uh, it wasn't like a like a classic. This is a classic, but the storytelling is messed up. Having a uh, uh, Seth Rollins be banged up from his mess up from night one, and carry over carry over to night two, having this be the first match of the night. We we not we didn't know how how bad of, of a, how uh healthy Rollins was gonna be in that mess up. The start match starts off with uh Drew hitting the Claymore out of nowhere like as soon as the bell rings. We all thought that got to be, be the end of the match, but Seth Rollins kicked, kicked out. Um, but um, Seth Rollins tried his best to get back his match up, hitting uh, curve stomps and pedigrees. He with a bad leg, but in the end of the day, Drew McIntyre find a way to put down Seth Rollins for good. Ended his 316-day reign as World Heavyweight Champion, and Drew McIntyre finally, finally, wins the World, World Championship, a World Championship. That was Mania in front of fans. Now we can stop. He can stop bissing and moaning and bissing and bissing and bissing about not winning the World World Championship in front of fans. That was Mania. He finally did it. He finally won the World Heavyweight Championship. He defeated Seth Rollins after being beat, getting beat by Seth Rollins in uh, two two separate occasions. And he got, He finally did it. But what he did not. See what he said not not said have not done is go on to the commentary booth, commentary table, what been seeing CM Punk's face. Cause I didn't actually know CM Punk went on commentary for his mess up because both men have brief history, you know, have, but CM Punk has been hearing like he's been going back and forth with both Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins. Um mostly Drew and um self, especially during like like lead up to um WrestleMania. Um, but he literally said it in a, a CM Punk's face, like CM Punk was standing there nonchalant late, so it's like, you yeah, know, I don't care, you know, whatever. But Drew McIntyre just kept on going and going and going to CM Punk's like, you know, fuck this shit. He knock, knocks uh, Drew McIntyre off the now table, takes off his brace, and he smashes it to, in the face of uh, Drew McIntyre. Now, we don't know if uh, CM Punk is clear to wrestle. I highly doubt that he, he's clear, clear right now, but him doing that, was just, I, I knew it was gonna happen. And it was just like, it was poetic. 
that this happened to Drew McIntyre. The artist said he was talking. The artist said he was he was uh the artist said he was talking, the artist trolling, he was doing on social media, making t shirts, uh making fun of the fact that he stole CM Punk's moment. Cause this was supposed to be CM Punk's uh mask that he uh, he was supposed to win. He was supposed to be be facing Seth Rollins. And Drew McIntyre would have been in his face. So CM Punk had to say said fuck it. And he smashed his brace in the face of Drew McIntyre. And we can we can we can stop we can stop hearing about uh Drew McIntyre best about not winning the world world championship in front of fans, but he gotta have another thing to bitch about. Cause out comes, see you on money in the bank. Damian Priest, get ready to cast in on on the world heavyweight champion Drew McIntyre, which he does. He casts in, throw him back in the ring, hits the south south of heaven, the set out choke slam, one, two, three, and Damian Priest is your new. World Air Raid Champion redeeming himself for night one when he lost the Chatty Towers to both A Town Down Under and Awesome Truth. <laughs> and this is what uh, Damian Priest meant when he said that uh, WrestleMania was going to be important for Judgment Day as a unit and as individuals because he, he uh, redeemed himself. He lost the titles at night, on night one. But he, he cast in and won the big, the big, the big, big one. In the World Heavyweight Championship. Now, the the Terror Twins, Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest are now champions, single champions. Um, it was cool. It's cool. Damian Priest went from Nakamura on steroids and Ring of Honor to bisexual Undertaker <laughs> in WWE at, and as the world world champion. And you know what? I was happy for, Dam for Damian Priest. I was watch I've been watching him for ever since he started in Ring Warner and I thought I thought I always thought he was uh uh really, really good in the ring. His scary was cool. Uh and he he always thought he was cool he always thought he was cool. Uh plain and simple. And he did good in the NFT. He um made uh made the most of his opportunity uh working with Bad Bunny, both during WrestleMania thirty seven and, and WrestleMania uh and uh back last uh, uh year last year. And I think that's why they they made him the world champion because he put they put him to be the world champion because what he how he how well he he uh he performed against Bad Bunny at, at Puerto Rico last 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 year, so I'm happy I had performed. I'm pretty sure Tim Punk was thinking to himself, I pray for this, and it happened to do Drew McIntyre, and Tim Priest is a new world heavyweight champion. I don't have much to say about the other two matches after uh, the first match. Um, the Philly Street fight, six man tag. I didn't. The, the WWE knew that nobody, nobody gonna care that much about this matchup, so they brought in people like Snoop Dogg and Bubba Ray Dudley to make to make us care, but we still didn't care. I still saw I still saw people walking to the uh, concession stands or the bathroom during that matchup. Uh, the matchup and like it was like a oh, under nine, nine under nine, under nine minutes. And two, the only strange thing about that about this matchup was B B Fab putting Scarlet to a table, and uh, Killer Cross again put to a table uh, by Montez Four after hitting a, his patented frost blast from the to, 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 to hell, from the heavens. That was the only thing I, that was the strange in my my eyes. There was a spot where Dawkins uh, pounced both uh, members of the AOP and uh, Montez did his uh, uh, Dive from the corner. It was that was a cool moment. You had that, that, like other than that, I didn't we really didn't see anything that I I like about the match except for B Fab getting in there, putting his call to a table with a pop four because Scarlet needed to put to, to get need, she needed to get her ass kicked. <laughs> I'm sorry, but B Fab did her thing. B Fab being the only member of uh, Hitwell being uh, appearing at WrestleMania. By the way, she the only only member of Hitwell that ever appeared at WrestleMania. Other three members of uh, Hitwell. Didn't 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 get an opportunity. It was good for her. I mean, she, I mean, honestly, I'm not even mad about that. Uh, but the three three puffers and uh, Bob Lashley got to get to get the win, and hopefully this is the end of their feud. Um, next match up, we had L. A. Knight taking on A. J. Styles with a C theme song. I mean, Devil Bubble, count your, count your days, count your days, because I don't get why he managed to just. 
trying to put two or three theme songs together and trying to make it your own. Cause I get what you trying you trying to do. I mean, it was basically a mess up between Demi guys and um, Evil Rays, but it sucked. It was a bad attempt to uh, to uh, make your own version of Evil Rays, and I don't I don't know I don't know how I like it. And plus, the same person that sung his uh his theme song, his new theme song, the same person that that uh rap raps raps uh solos record theme song. And also, Austin Theory is seeing the version of 8 Down Down. I hate, I hate the Rebels so much. Their theme songs, most of their theme songs are not just remix version of other theme songs for other wrestlers. And just, they downgrade from their, uh, their respective uh, theme songs for other uh, wrestlers' other theme songs. But anyway, going, going talk about the mass up. I like the mass up. I didn't mind it. Uh, it wasn't like you know it was it was the greatest matchup I, I've seen, but it was it, it definitely was um, a really good matchup, really good song for Ellie Knight. Um, Ellie Knight hit the springboard, the uh, springboard DT, uh, uh, tornado DT on the eight styles looked pretty good. Um, but eight styles trying to find a way to win the matchup, trying with the try to hit the phenomenal form, but Ellie Knight didn't decapitate him. I kind of counted him uh, off the ropes and hit the BLT in the middle of the ring, in the middle of the prime battle. One, two, three, and LA Knight gets his first win of his male and his first West male appearance. Appearance. So I mean, good for. I mean, I'm I'm I'm, 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 happy, I'm happy for LA Knight because he's there this moment after being being like one of the top top uh, big faces on SmackDown, and they couldn't they didn't want to give him the world championship. They didn't want to give him any world, any t- title uh on, in the mid card. So this was their uh, next best, but next next best thing, give him a win at WrestleMania, and what better way to do that is against against the uh, one of the best wrestlers of all time, A A Styles. So I, I don't mind that I don't mind that at all. I enjoy the matchup. I, I'm happy that Elliot Elliot Knight gets got the first one at WrestleMania. You got the U.S. Championship matchup. Uh, Logan Paul defending against Kevin Owens and and uh Randy Orton. But Logan Paul came out came out coming out to uh. Coming out with the Prime Bottle again, the Brian Prime Bottle mascot with a huge monster truck looking uh, truck of uh, cover of Prime logos and the Ice Pop uh, Prime Bottle on top top of it. <laughs> uh, Kevin Owens uh, and Randy Orton drove the, the golf cart that he used uh, night night before uh, like uh, on SmackDown to the ring. It was it was funny. It was it was a really fun matchup between uh, these these three. I had no complaints. Um, you had uh, Logan Paul against Brad Nux, knocking out Randy Randy Orton, and also knocking out Kevin Owens. He he, uh, but uh, Randy Orton kicked out, kicked out after getting knocked out by uh, Logan Paul from the, using Brad Nux, which was a shock to me because I thought that was gonna be it. It's like it was, I was like, oh, here we go, another matchup that Logan Paul wins and win with, with Brad Nux, but that that wasn't the case. Uh, but um, Randy Orton hits uh, Logan Paul with RKO. He got to go for the putt kick. But every time he try to go for a puck kick, he gets counter or something happens. This time, the prime mascot pulls Logan Paul's leg from the outside, pulls him out of the ring, and it's not KSI underneath, underneath the the, uh, the pine bottle. It's ISO ISO Speed. Now, if you don't know who ISO Speed is, I don't blame you. I don't really know him that much. I don't. I I know I know of him. I seen hit. A little, some clips of him like making fun of KSI I big ass forehead. That that's it. But um, he's just an, another one of those loud, loud, and obnoxious uh, uh, streamers on YouTube. Twist and kick. That's it. But he got hit. We got he got what he got. What, he, got what he, he got what he deserved. And he got hit with RKO to the now table. But they didn't break because I don't be as gay as hell. But the close moments of the match up, you had uh, Randy Orton. Hen uh came on come over okay out of nowhere while come on trying to attempt to pop a bow bomb. We didn't want to literally counter it in midair. Like uh, another crazy RKO okay from anyone. <laughs> but Logan Paul sneaks his way in the in the ring, throwing Wayne out of the ring, hitting a, a ridiculously ridiculously looking uh frost blast to Kevin Owens for the win and still a US champion, Logan Paul. Like I'm not surprised that Logan Paul won. Uh, I kind of figured he would win because they, they I think they're gonna try to have him hold a title to uh, SummerSlam because SummerSlam is in, in Cleveland. He's from Cleveland, 
So I don't know what, I, I don't know who gonna take the title off of him, but I know they gotta have him have him defend that for defend that title at SummerSlam at at some point. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who could be who the person could be, take the title, title off him. I don't. I can't think of anyone that that, that could take the title off of uh, Will Quasha for LA Knight. But um, it depends on it depends on who could be drafted to SmackDown or where the, the world where the title will be smack, drafted to. Cause Wherever that, wherever William Paul gets drafted to, that gonna be determined who I think of take the title off of him, either before SummerSlam or at SummerSlam, cause I really don't know who gonna be taking take the title off of him anytime soon. Semi main event, we got Bailey versus Io Shirai for Women's Championship. Um, I I thought this match was gonna be good, but I did not expect it to be this good. I really enjoyed this match up. It was really the best match of WrestleMania period. Um, they're definitely up there at, at the best woman woman, woman, woman match of WrestleMania. Um, and Adrian Brown said in the review on the the previous YouTube channel that this felt like a startup match. And I, I agree. It, it did feel like it did feel like it felt like that because I saw a glimpse of Stardom EOSY. Not NT not not NT EOSY, not WWE EOSY. But start on your survive. Cause this this is the the the, the woman that, that was literally reason why we could she got she got the name the, the genius of the sky. Cause we saw a glimpse of, of start on your survive in that match last night against Bailey. And Bailey did their thing too. Um she put out the the move uh the spice the spiral up from uh from uh, Victoria's uh, move set. Um when I saw that move I I I knew right away oh that that Victoria's move. See, I got from Victoria. Um, it was a cool, cool uh, little uh, move that she did. Pay tribute to uh, Victoria. Um, at one point, you had uh, Eos Y hitting the springboard drop kick on the outside, and hitting the uh, outside moose out to Bailey on the outside. Um, Bailey needs to get a new, new finisher. She really does, cause the Wolf plant, it does not look good. Either get a new finisher or Make it look look like 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 a credible move, cause I just I just I, I didn't like I don't like it. I mean I see I, just, I, I, I honestly need to need, need to go back to the belly and belly. See your bare face again. Just use that move again. Just use the belly and belly uh, as your finisher again. But I don't know like the the, the wolf play not not good good not good looking finisher in my opinion. But it, it was it was a cool moment where uh it was why countered the wolf play by. Doing a front flip and making Bailey land her bad bad knee, and injure the knee, and try to take take advantage. But Bailey finds a way to knock out uh, Eosy with a lariat, hitting the Muscle Man uh, like el elbows from the top rope, hitting the Wolf Plant, awful move. But she gets the win and becomes the new Women's Champion, defeating Eosy, getting her her revenge off from from Darren Control. And finally getting that WrestleMania moment by herself, and I couldn't be more more happier. Um, Bailey had has no had always she always I always thought she was very underrated when it comes down to four whole, four horse women. Um, people always talk about Solid, people always talk about Becky Lynch and uh, Sasha Banks, but Bailey should be in the conversation as, as one of the best, as like the, the top, at the very top or like number two, because she really had done it all, and. And just she really is uh, underrated when it comes to the four four horse women, and I continue to say I will continue to say that I think Bailey is really good. I think this she, this this one here continue to solidify her her career and her legacy uh, in, in women wrestling. Um, I heard, uh, so ESY had nothing to be ashamed of. You know her her time with the word lackluster. I think ESY had nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, she put out a great uh, great match against uh, Bailey. And Bailey, well, well deserved. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't, she didn't earn, uh, deserve it. She earned it, cause she been busting her ass for far too long as a uh, by herself. And also, helping out Dakota Kai, helping out Yo, uh, you get their their stride in the main roster. Like she done, she done, she had did, did a lot. Uh, when she came back to the WWE, and I, I can't be more happier for her. She is one of the one of the best women wrestlers right now. And in the past five years, and she she pulled it last night. 
So, shout out to Bailey, the new women's champion. And now it's time to talk about the main event. Cody Rose, Roman Reigns, the American Nightmare, the Tribal Chief. Are we going to finish his story? Or has it, well, the story will, will remain un incomplete? This matchup for an unsupported championship and bloodline rules, you knew you knew some shit gonna go down. You knew it was gonna be some some shit, and you were just waiting. You were just waiting to see what what was gonna happen towards the like last few minutes of the matchup. But towards the beginning of the matchup, you had um, Cody Rhodes coming out with, with Brandy. The first time you see Brandy on WWE TV, like actually like. Accompanying Cody Rose since um the days in, in uh her days in WWE as Eden Styles, Eden Eden Styles, <laughs> um it was coming uh, Cody Rose coming out with, with a epic 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 prelude, stage of his days in AEW, um and he has a crazy he had a he had, he had a ridiculous looking match, it was it was cool it was cool, and Roman Reigns coming out with a, with a orchestra version of his uh, his theme song, um. The match does start off pretty pretty good. Roman Reigns hitting uh Cody Rhodes with a crossroads out of nowhere, proving that hey, even your own move can't beat me. <laughs> it's just poke a fun poke a fun at that at the fact that he he, he just can't you can't you can't win. You can't beat the tribal, tribal chief. Um at one point you had just like Cody, well, Roman Reigns is talking trash, talking shit to um uh Cody Rhodes whole match this like can this this, this is my company bitch. And, like he's just talking talking his shit and like I mean, what, what, I mean, you can't you can't go wrong with with Cody, uh, with Roman Reigns talking trash to, to his opponents, but you can't go wrong with Pat McAfee and Cody Reigns sucking his dick on commentary to the point I had, I had to mute, mute the, the TV uh, multiple, multiple multiple times because them Mo mostly Pat and Cody Reigns. Um, but either way, the match up was the match lead up to um before the the, the shenanigans, it would end up being pretty uh, back and forth. And once we start seeing Cody Rhodes doing the uh, multiple cross cross horses, you know some shit gonna go down. Cause he did it the first time, and I come Jimmy Uso, super kick out of nowhere for Jimmy Jimmy Uso, and he started attacking uh, Cody Rhodes and just beating him beating, beating him down. And I come his former Taddy Taddy partner, Cody Rhodes had former Taddy partner, Jimmy Uso, making a save, and Jimmy J is now 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 fighting back and forth on the stage. And now out of nowhere, Jey Uso yeets his brother off the stage and spears him through the table, uh, off off the stage. And it was I thought I I honestly thought that they 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 uh, died. I did not see a table uh, down there until I saw the, the cloth, uh, and the and the table being being bent in half underneath underneath the cloth. So that that was a crazy spot uh, for um Jimmy and Jay. Um, so. Wolverines Reigns get taken advantage, uh, only get into account uh, after hitting the the spear or the I think hit uh, hit the Superman punch. Hit hit hit, hit, hit the Super Superman punch, and and we all know that that uh, that, that would be a kick out. Cause the Wolverine, Wolverine never hit Wolverine never beat someone with, with Superman punch. So that that we all know that that was obvious. So Cody will try to do it again, and out comes Solo Sequel. Say the say the next year. Say the last year, like to a T, because he tried to hit the third cross walls, and out comes uh, Solo's Accord with a small spike, and we all thought that was going to be it, but Cody was, kick Cody was kicked out. And Solo's Accord broke over to Warren Reigns, telling him to get up and so, so he could finish, finish this, and he did a, did a small spike to the spear uh, combination, and that was that was a kick out from Cody Rose. And, so, and Solo's Accord it pissed off. And doesn't know what to do. He's, he's pissed that he did. He keep on kick, keep on kicking out, and out comes the person that he he beat. He let the last person he beat. John Cena. John Cena comes out. He was racing. John Cena goes right after Solo to Coil, the same person that Solo beat at the Crown Jewel, and ever since then, Solo has never won a match on TV. And John Cena like. Pun like punching him, uh, Solo to in the middle of the ring, throw him out of the ring, and before he goes to go after Solo again, he has a uh, woman ring with a hydro jump it, just for hell of it. He goes after Solo, 
cleared off the, the Spanish down table. He hits the AA to show the corner. Do them still stretch pan down table. And then you hear the music of the final boss, The Walk. And it's 11 years in the making. This is the first time we see The Walk and John Cena face off since they had their last one on one matchup at what's made uh, 29. But when John Cena beat what, The Walk for the WWE Championship. So it was a cool moment of seeing them face off. And John Cena did the You Can See Me and he tried to punch, and punch The Walk. But The Walk grabs him for the walk bottom in the middle of the ring. And right after he, right, right after he hits him with a, with a walk bottom, he said, I think get the fuck out of the walk ring. <laughs> that, was, that was funny as hell. Um, then he grabbed the belt. He grabbed the, the belt that says Mama Wolves. And he get ready to whip uh, Cody Wolves like a dog. That's like he's been doing for weeks. And I, then he hear Sahara Hotel India Echo Indian Delta Sealed. The Sealed music thing th song hits. And I immediately thought, did they get the Bo Did Bo to get to come back to the WWE with some shit? What the hell is going on? And I was like, I was so, I was so confused. I was so like, like I was confused. I was hyped. I was like, I was conflicted. I didn't know what, what, what was going on. And then I, all of a sudden, I, I, I hear the crowd going crazy. And I see one ring come back in the ring. And he hits two, uh, two man punch to someone. And ended up being set once. Seal, gear, and all, with a steel chair. He was going to hit the, the he was gonna hit the walk with a steel chair. Just like he hit uh, one ring with a steel chair in the, in the back in the back 10 years ago. And one, and walk, like, you know, Gordon. Like, oh, hell yeah, Mama, Mama Rose. This is for you. I could whip yourself like a like a dog again, and uh, and he got he got he got he got he got, he got to do it. He got to do it. And then you hear a gong. Lights go out. Another gong. Lights go back on. And then you see the Undertaker behind the final boss, stalking his prey, mean mugging him, and the Rock still talking trash, like he's still talking trash, not knowing that the Undertaker right behind him. And and the right as soon as he turned around, it was at that moment he they fucked up. Cause Undertaker grabs the neck of, of, of the walk, hits him with a toe slam, let's go back out, and both walk and Undertaker are gone. It's just it's just woman and Cody on, on woman woman Cody and and Seth Rollins laying laid out. And all of a sudden, when we took 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 when we when we took the ball, I out the ball. Long enough for her quite well to recover, cause Wolverine's still 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 here. Instead of going after one Cody Rose, he goes after Seth Rollins. He hits Cody uh, Seth Rollins with back of the, on the back of the, of the chair, similar similar to what Seth Rollins did to him ten years ago. And after Cody Rose took the bands, one cross Rose, two cross Rose, three cross Rose, the cross Rose Trinity. One, two, three. The story has been finished. And your new WWE Undisputed Champion, Cody Freaking Rose. This had to be one of the most, one of the best uh, masses, definitely one of the best masses in WrestleMania history. Because, over book or not, it was a really fun match to watch. And it's just, this is what makes wrestling so freaking good. Like, I don't care. I mean, yeah, yeah, Rock saying that, oh, wrestling, wrestling is cool again because of, the, because, because of the Rock. No, it's not. Wrestling was always, was always this cool. Wrestling was always this good. You just made it a little bit better, Rock. A little bit better. This mess up, this, this, the story that was, that was happening with Cody Wells for over a year. It was led to that moment right here. And just God damn I love Pro Wrestling. This is why this is why this is why I say that Pro Wrestling is an escape for me. Cause it was a it was a great moment. And I, I, I enjoy every minute of it, and um, 
I uh, it was just a, a really good matchup, really from from uh, night as a whole for for West Virginia. And we're seeing Cody Rhodes finally get that moment, finally holding the championship, holding up 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 in the air, and giving it to his mom, mom mom Rhodes. It was a cool moment, and everybody celebrated. Everybody came out to celebrate. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, um, Randy Orton, Jey Uso, LA Knight. For some reason, I don't know why he was out there. <laughs> um, and he was Seth Rollins. You know, though he was banged up. He had the, had the time to shake the hand of Cody Rhodes and said, "This is your time." And it was it was a really cool moment to see Cody Rhodes finally celebrating. And the story is finally finished. And the only the only thing it, it took Cody was it took Roman Reigns to keep to take the eye off the ball to focus more on his grudge his his uh holding his grudge for uh Samoans, his fallen brother the way he did to him ten, ten years ago and what Savon said lead up to this mess up lead up to West Main as a whole he meant it. He said that there was only one person that, that is suited to be your shield, and he would he would someone was willing to be the shield for Cody Rhodes, so he can he can so he Cody Rhodes can, can take out Cody, uh, woman himself. That's that is indeed the definition of cinema. That's the definition of storytelling right there, and it was it was overall I, I enjoyed I enjoyed it WrestleMania. I enjoyed this this, uh, this main event, and it would definitely go down as one of the best, one of the best, one of the most memorable uh, West Man's of all time. And it may not be up there as uh, at the, the very very best West Man, but it will be up there as like a West Man that we talk about and be uh, will be a watch watch toward to uh, watch by many people for many years to come. And I enjoy every every second of it. Um, so yeah. Congratulations to American Nightmare Cray Rose. And you and you have finished your story. And us Cory Choir babies cannot be happier. I mean, I didn't know product I didn't know, I didn't know almost cry on this on this video. <laughs> anyway That's all my thoughts on night night two, what's me? Let me know down below what are your thoughts on night night two. How you feel about Cory Rose finally finishing the story? How you feel about uh, Bailey, uh, win the championship. David Priest casting the uh, the the money break briefcase, and being the new world, world heavyweight champion. Let me know down down below in the comments. Like the video, subscribe, tap the bell. I hope you guys have a good good weekend. Um, I know that I haven't done a live review uh for a last week's episode, and I'm gonna do that plus the this week's episode that that, that, that just happened. So be all look, look out for that. Um, I just been like focused on covering the rest of me, uh, get my my, my business and reviews out. So yeah, I gonna be doing that later on in the week. And yeah, hope you guys have a good weekend. Follow me on social media at Twitter, Matt Christianist. Follow me on Instagram at uh, Michael Davis on two. Follow the Hutch page at Hutch Phantom, and subscribe to the DPSO on YouTube. Give them those, those fellas to to out twenty thousand subscribers. Till that time, Michael Davis into a black. I'm out.